Welcome back to the Independent Investor Channel for uh, another update on Aduro Clean Technologies. I thought it a uh, timely uh, opportunity to come out with an Aduro Clean Technologies video uh, after the worst week of the year in 2023 uh, stock market action and volatility. Um, I like to press when other people are retracting. Uh, I like to try to apply an opposites attract type of approach to uh, my stock market philosophy and what I see in opportunity emerging now. I'm just going to say up front that I think that this market is probably providing one of the greatest opportunities for wealth building that I've ever seen uh, in my 25 plus years of investing because good companies are being discredited. Uh, companies that um, were, were, were wonderful just a couple of years ago are absolutely being destroyed. New company initiatives are absolutely being dismissed. Any positive news or catalyst with regard to any type of forward projection on companies are absolutely being thrown out right now. And I think in the short term, it makes total sense. Absolutely. It's very, very easy in the short term to get caught up on this idea of groupthink. And that's exactly what we have going on right now. And for those independent minds out there that actually see what is going on, uh, the profit potential is going to be insurmountable. And I just want to talk right up front about the stock price uh, and the market activity right now as it relates to Aduro Clean Technology. I started covering this company back in November, which is when I started to actually accumulate a position in the company. Um, I would have bought the company if it had had nothing to do with me sharing or profiling the company through uh, social media. I'm glad to do it. This is one of my favorite stories uh, to cover. It's a very easy, easily investable company. I'm investing alongside ownership, which owns 50% owns of the company. Uh, and I've spoken with um, at least uh, uh, a good majority of uh, the management with the Duro, and I think they're headed toward wonderful things. I don't think that this team will allow this to fail. I also don't believe that they're going to rush into this and 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 do things frivolously. I think they're doing things calculatively. I think they'll roll out the strategic opportunity here with the Duro Clean Technologies, uh, but it's going to take some time. And I, I certainly don't think that in these markets that are not conducive uh, to, to companies that are looking to get their start, I think it requires a, an extreme amount of patience, if patience even exists in investing. I think all too often people misconstrue this idea that they invest and wait, but they don't understand that time is somewhat immaterial in this whole thing. Could a Duro blow the doors off next year? Yeah, they absolutely could. Could it be five years before they start to realize uh, material revenue uh, to, 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 to start to move the needle? Uh, could we be in a prolonged state of volatile stock markets to subdue good companies like this? All rhetorical questions, none of which I come and presume to have the answers for. What I know is this, since November to now, I've covered the company in about a, a range. When I started looking at the company, um, I started looking at it at the in the low 50 cent range. Uh, and it wasn't until I could get everything squared away with the broker before I was able to start to, to enter into my first share blocks of a Duro at around the low 60 cents, I believe 61 cents, 62 cents, something like that. And my current share position is disclosed uh, for you guys in uh, the exact share amounts, the exact time that I bought the shares, um, and in what amount in the description below. Uh, for full transparency, Aduro has partnered with um, uh, the Independent Investor Channel, Cornerstone Capital Solutions, uh, to provide awareness services on the company. So I, I have been compensated for my efforts. But my efforts are um, are aimed at providing awareness on a company that I think right now is being dismissed, along with a lot of other companies. I think it's a big mistake with this company. I really do. Now, if you take a look at the company and you determine that it's not for you or you, know, you don't have conviction over the space, um, you don't think that there's a strategic direction or you question the technology, whatever it is that you do, I'm going to address that in this video. When we talk about, you know, what is the really the roadmap to success for a Duro? And I think a lot of that roadmap has already been checked off. I certainly do. 
when you talk about product validation, when you talk about um, not working on an island and harmonizing with big industry, they're there. When you talk about an addressable market, it's there. When you talk about the ability to organically grow their talent pool uh, within the constructs of uh, some of the collaborative deals that Aduro has struck just as of late, uh, some of those deals that they've struck here and will benefit from uh, with regard to developing their own in-house talent. And what an amazing is initiative to segue into um, reducing the impact of the earth made by um, by plastic waste. What a fabulous initiative. But the stock price itself, I've had a few people hit me up and it's like, you know, is, is, is Aduro still okay? Are you still bullish on Aduro? I think it really speaks to a very, very shallow and uneducated approach to stock market investing in, in whole. When I've been covering the company less than six months and I'm getting questions like that, for a new developing company that's fluctuating between 40 and 50 million in market cap that has the majority of its potential in front of it, all right? Now, it's fair to say in the same breath that while we have the opportunity to benefit from that future potential, it's fair to acknowledge that there has been a decade of work that has gone into this name up until now. So the luxury of sitting within a five to six month time frame and suggesting because the company is off a few cents, which I, I would probably suggest has everything to do with the private placement deal that was issued at two and a half million dollars. It's no problem at all. I, I guess a two and a half million placement uh, uh, constitutes a five million dollar reduction in the company's market cap. Um, I just kind of laugh at that a little bit. And there will be people uh, that will be taking advantage of that private placement with units, uh, uh, stocks, uh, as well as the opportunity to buy the companies through warrants. I think it's great. Uh, I think it was a, a conservative approach to raising a little bit of capital. And, you know, the company's not going to do anything crazy to dilute shareholders. They're not going to do that. The, the management is, again, is aligned. Uh, with shareholders to make sure that the strategic vision, yes, is, is uh, uh, went after, but they're not going to do so in a way that uh, compromises the integrity of the company. And they're not going to do it in a way that's irresponsible. Um, I truly believe that. And I think right now, Aduro is kind of in an in, in interesting position where their relationship with Shell has them engaged in advancing their technology. It's that simple. Um, the reason why I've kind of stretched the frequency of my Aduro Clean Technologies videos out is just because of that. I believe that Aduro is working hard right now behind the scenes. And when it becomes appropriate to share that applicable information with the grander audience, I will. Uh, but a, a lot of what I bring to the table with regard to my Aduro coverage is my instinct in trying to capture um, what it is that I think is exciting about the company and, and, and albeit sharing information through conferences and, you know, strategically uh, positioning themselves with uh, some of the talent pools with uh, some of the laboratories that they just recently partners with is exciting, but it's not groundbreaking. Okay. It's not earth shattering. And from an investment perspective, you know, my golden question is when is a Duro going to make revenue, <laughs> you know, and, and that question I think we are we are premature in answering. We can speculate along their verticals uh, on which of those verticals could potentially allow for a little bit of revenue generation here in the short to medium term, but that's just presumptuous on our part, and it's fun to do, uh, albeit uh, uh, speculation at this point, and whether or not that could happen within the next six months to a year, um, I don't know, uh, and I don't think that's really important. I think when we look at the product verticals with Aduro and we look at how exciting this prospect is just with the plastic recycling vertical in and of itself, the heavy oil upgrading and the ability to uh, fortify the bitumen uh, with the diluent to assist in moving that product along the pipeline is fascinating in and of itself. Aduro is a three-headed monster, and unfortunately, um, uh, it gets looked upon as um, a microcap company with, with nothing to offer, discredited in a way that I feel like a lot of the microcap companies right now are being discredited, who are progressing along 
uh, specific phases of their operation, enough to garner value, certainly, but not enough to expect that that realized value is acknowledged in this marketplace. That There's just no way. Um, these markets are just about as brutal as I think I've ever seen. And I'm not talking about, you know, um, the uh, pandemic uh, sell-off. That was systemic. Uh, and there was a lot of unknowns with regard to that sell-off. The mortgage-backed security crisis comes to my mind, which, you know, those were systemic sell-offs. This just seems like sentiment is absolutely in the dumps because the after effect of the systemic shock that was created from the global pandemic is, is actually um, uh, being incurred right now with the after effects of that. Um, and I, I, I think that people want to act surprised by it. I, for one, am not. I'm not surprised that we're in this current environment that we're just going to have to fight through in the short term. And then I think when we do emerge from this, I think the realization of overlooking names like an Aduro Clean Technology is going to have a rubber band effect. And a lot of that money that's waiting on the sideline is going to pour into the markets. And I'll sit back and um, and and observe and watch the, the circus go by. Um, I typically try to invest uh, before the circus even starts. So uh, call me crazy. That's my application. And that's probably why I've carved out such an independent application uh, in my life and that I, I do uh, what it is that's contrary to the group think. And I would uh, 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 invite uh, my viewing audience to um, consider doing the same. Uh, the validation that Aduro has uh, achieved uh, with its hydrochemolytic uh, technology is is second to none. So when people come to the table and they say, you know, I challenge the idea of chemical recycling, I, I, I challenge the idea that this will even work, Ryan, will this even work? M might I remind you, my friends, that the technology has already been validated. It's been third party validated. Uh, the company did that for shareholders. Uh, and it was a critical milestone in uh, the company's validation of the uh, product internally. Now, externally, uh, the Shell Game Changer program is not to be understated. And I, I laugh when the company sells off. If this company sells off more, I'll be doubling my position. Um, I've already achieved my uh, base position of 25,000 shares, and I'll sit on that. It's not a large position. It's not a small position by any means. But for the position that's appropriate for me and my portfolio and my risk tolerance, it works just fine. Um, where I see the prospects of this company going, it could be a very material position into my future. And as a calculative investor, uh, all my eggs are not with Aduro Clean Technologies. The base of my wealth are, are, are spread out and diversified as appropriate. Um, but I do disclose those so you can kind of gauge where my mind is and where my loyalty is with talking about how this three-headed monster could materialize over time uh, as long as Aduro doesn't get bought up, um, which I think is a very, very distinct possibility. The, very, the value is there now. Um, I hope that doesn't happen. Uh, I think that it's probably an inevitable. Uh, I think here at a $40 million market cap, I don't think that they would even consider being bought out uh, unless they supplemented the M with a B as far as market cap and valuation. I think one, 1.5 to 2.5 billion would probably be in the range of a buyout price for for where I would consider the potential of this company to lie. Um, that is presumptuous on my part. We'll just have to see how the story uh, unfolds and materializes over time. But when we talk about the opportunity globally, it's not to be it's not to be ignored with regard to the governmental mandates that are coming for these large plastic producing companies to start to play ball and really take a hard look at these technologies that exist. Now, for people who come to me and they say, what's wrong with the Duro? It's down for five days. Ryan, you said it went up every single day, as it should. As it should, the company hasn't gone up even close to enough. It's gone up a few pennies since I started covering it, but that's nothing. It had, The stock really relatively has not moved. Um, these uh, uh, moves of a few cents a day or up, down, it doesn't matter. The stock, just like most stocks, are not moving currently. But let me pose it to you this way. Wouldn't you suggest that when you look at a company like Aduro in the using the lens I have, 
as it sits right now at 45 million in market cap, and you look at the prospects that this company has declared openly through the open marketplace, and when you look ahead at the opportunity that Aduro presents, wouldn't you suggest that the opportunity uh, exists in the future of this company and not necessarily in the present or the past? My investment thesis is 100% in the future prospects of the company. And I think when these global initiatives are rolled out for these companies to have to start to take a hard look, which has been really validated and substantiated through the Game Changer program with Shell, um, in that it speaks to the hunger that these large institutions have to adopt these technologies and really start to get them to a commercial state where they can be commercially viable and really start to turn back the value that, that they uh, could actually provide. And the last thing I'll talk about here with the Duro, and we'll wrap it up for this update, is the need. You know, a lot of people may come and they may look at it and say, yeah, fancy name, hydrochemiletic technology. Don't know what it means, but just sounds fancy to me. It's too good to be true. Do we even need this product? Is there a need? You know, and I think for so long, people have been, people have been taught to believe that if they don't see a problem, then the problem doesn't exist and not have the foresight to understand that if you dig a little bit deeper into the plastic problem, you will identify that it is uh, far from made up. It is far from a farce. It is far from an initiative of the far left or part of a green initiative, okay? And I think the majority, the best I could tell, and I was guilty of this, is not understanding the extent of the problem until really starting to study up on this topic uh, when I was introduced to Enduro Clean Technologies. And the whole idea here is to challenge people in identifying a need for this product. You know, is the world a better place with or without a Duro? Now, that doesn't need to drive your investing thesis. But I would suggest that if you start to peel back the layers on the need uh, for a solution like a Duro and many others, you'll quickly find that the global demand over this technology to start to tackle this plastic pollution problem and to start to earmark some of the mandates that are coming along the pike and start to really reduce the amount of plastic that we put out into a, a, a secular economy right now that's broke. The circular economy is not possible now because we're producing plastic that we know is uh, inevitably impossible to recycle until now. And so when we start to question the need for an Aduro, the need is right now. And as quickly as Aduro can move along their timeline to evolve and bring this product to a commercial state with the assistance of Shell Game Changer program and others in the space, it's going to be an amazing story. And I'll sit back and watch the circus go by. I'll watch this parade calmly, collectively, because my position is already built. Whether or not you want to take a position in the company or not, you do have to applaud the efforts of the companies looking to take on these plastic problems and many other global initiatives that have plagued us for many, many years. And the solution has been to stick your head in the sand. No longer will that be tolerated. The movement toward these initiatives and leveraging the technology that exists nowadays and putting them into the rigor of commercial application is very, very real. And it's an exciting micro sector to be part of in understanding that I think the best is ahead of us. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into this video. Leave your comments at the bottom of the video. We'll do our best to answer uh, any and all updates that we have on the company as they unfold. Please subscribe to the channel if you enjoy the content. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in to this update on Enduro Clean Technologies. And good luck in your investment future.